Welcome to Health Professionals Outside the Box podcast. In this series, I'll be talking to health professionals who've leveraged their professional skills to pursue alternative income sources, alternative careers, and entrepreneurship. We will gain insight into their motivations, experiences, and challenges, and learn how we too can carve our own path to finding purpose, fulfillment, and financial freedom. I'm your host, Fee. Thank you for listening. Okay, so welcome back to this episode of the podcast. Joining me today is Dr. Nikki Ramskill. She's the founder of the Female Money Doctor. She's the only doctor to be featured in the top 25 seat feed spot list of personal finance blogs in the UK. She trained to become a money coach and now helps women from all over the world to improve their mental health and well-being through getting organized with your finances and building wealth for the future. She's also a host of a podcast called the Money Medicine Clinic Podcast. Dr. Nikki, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. This is really exciting. It is exciting. Talk about money, money. Yeah, it's always a great topic in my world. Isn't it? So tell us about yourself, your professional background as well. Sure. Okay. So I became a doctor in 2009. So that was my, when I qualified, um, uh, down in London. And initially my thing was, I'm going to become an obstetrician and gynecologist. So I was very focused from very early on to get to that point, did everything to get to that level. And I got to my fourth year of obstetrics and gynecology as a registrar. And I just just thought, I can't do this anymore. Um, If you've ever read the book, um, This Is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay, that kind of gives you um, a representation of what life felt like for me. Mm. So, uh, yeah, if you've never read it before, it's a great read, especially if you're in the medical field. It really does highlight some of the, the sort of. the the traumas that we go through in our professional careers as doctors um so yeah so I had I did that for four years and then decided I'd had enough took a year out went traveling for half of that year and realized that I was in a very bad money situation I hadn't actually stopped to look at my money at that point because I just thought well I'm a doctor I've got money coming in what's the problem but when I actually sat down and thought about it I was in a lot of debt and I'm talking like five figures worth of debt over and above my medical school training like it, it didn't even factor that in um so yeah I, I was like this this needs to change this absolutely needs to change so when I got back off of my travels I made it my mission to learn from other people how to get out of debt how to sort my money out start investing and really turn it around and five years on from there I'm now debt free I'm investing I've got savings behind me and it's and it's completely transformed my life that's great it's yeah it it was just I'm so grateful for every single person's blog post they put out podcast they put out course they put out because it's (laughs) really it was really helpful to me and then when I eventually decided I wanted to become a GP um that's when I realized that my patients and my colleagues were also suffering they also had similar problems to the sort of level I had and I really wanted to do something about it because as far as I'm concerned money and health are very intertwined it's very enmeshed and as a GP I felt that was a responsibility to actually do something about it Um, and then I started the female money doctor blog to write about my experiences and what I was doing and what I was learning and it's gone from there really and I absolutely love it so yeah that's where I am now yeah I think that's true um we focus on physical uh emotional and mental health and we don't really uh pay much attention to financial health Mm, yeah but it's so important it definitely is so why are you passionate about creating financial security for women and what inspires oh it I mean as far as I'm concerned women um it's been a long time coming all right so we've had many many years where we've not had control of our own finances historically they've always been looked after for us and now we are taking control of that I mean I saw a stat recently that said that you know, more and more women now are the main breadwinners in their family. And a lot of that is because they're single mums. But that really stood out to me. And I thought, wow, we've, we are, we've come such a long way. And 
often there is a fear around making more money because we don't know what to do with it. You know, we're, we're frightened of tax. We're frightened of investing with, you know, we don't, we, it's, it seems so complicated that we don't want to go there and we don't get taught it at school. You just sort of somehow expected to know what to do as an adult. Um, so for me, I can see that women are the key to unlocking so much negativity around money. You know, if they learn what to do, they can teach their kids what to do, other people what to do. They can spread that money to their communities by employing people, by buying products, by by just empowering each other just to build wealth. Mm. So for, I, I mean, I, women's health is my background, right? Obstetrics and gynecology was always going to be about women for me because I'm very passionate about women in all senses of the word, you know, women's health and their wealth. Um, so I can see that that is basically the key to mm. everything. And I want to do my part to help. Sure, sure. And so what does a money coach do? And what, what are your services? What services do you offer? So a money coach is not a financial advisor. A financial advisor can advise you on what to do with your pension, what products to buy, what insurances to buy. A money coach is, is like a, it's like a fitness coach. It's, it's, you know, somebody that's helping to guide you, point you in the right direction, show you what's available um, put some inspiration and motivation into your head so that you can go out there and empower yourself and, and do what you need to do um, in order to, improve your finances so the sorts of things that I do with people is I do mindset work we do group work together I've done some one-to-one stuff um, if someone you know needs a little bit more intense work um, it's just about just giving somebody the tools to be able to take it and run with it and make it their own mm. that's how I want to see it. I, want, I don't want people relying on somebody else to give them all the information I want them to be able to know to go out and and learn it for themselves so mm. that's, that's did you I have did you have to do any training for it so initially no so this this is the thing um it because financial advisors obviously have got years and years worth of exams and studying to do just like doctors um i thought initially that i had to do that and it really did hold me back but i realized that actually a lot of people out there that are coaching others around finances don't have any formal qualifications at all it comes from their own experience um, which of course I've got a lot because I've been in, been in and out of debt now so I know how to help people with that but this year since my my GP training finalized um, I actually wanted to get some formal qualifications so you can go out there and get um, international coaching federation qualifications not specifically around money but around mindset and lifestyle and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing so that's that's what I'm going to do this year um, just to really cement what I'm learning and, and learn some new tools and, and thing and ways to help people. So mm. yeah, it's, I think if you, if you wanted, or you're interested in doing something like this or being a coach in whatever, you don't actually need to have the qualifications, but I think now in our world, I think people want to see that. So actually it is important to be thinking along those lines, but it's not, it doesn't need to stop you from getting started. And also, I think because we have so many resources available to us on the Internet. So I think yeah. if you wanted to get an idea of what that was um, as a start, you can go online, yes. do Google searches, go on YouTube, look at videos just yes. to get a basic idea of where to start. Um, did you have to take any additional courses for starting a business like the coaching a business? I chose to because I felt I had no knowledge at all about building a business. I started a blog. I knew how to do that because I tried it a few times with other topics. Um, so I knew how to do that. And I'm sort of reasonably um, good with my computer literacy. So I could kind of go on YouTube, look up what I needed to do for something and then translate it onto my website. So that was fine. But the actual building a business itself, I've had a lot of mentors. I've had a lot of coaches around it. And, and that's because everybody's got something to, to offer if they've been in the that space for such a long time I, I needed to learn from them basically so I'm I had one um, coach who basically helped me put together my business online um, to give me the idea about how to build an email list how to create online courses an online membership how to how to do all those things I've had other coaches that have helped me with the the social media side. So, you know, how, how does Instagram work? How does TikTok work? How does Instagram work? You know, all the um, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, you know, all those different mm. social media platforms, they all have their own little nuances. And actually it's really helpful to learn for people that, that focus solely on those areas. Um, and I've also had other coaches and mentors that help me with my mindset 
because when you start a business that's when all your your stuff starts coming up it's 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 incredible personal development <laughs> it's mm. just you know to start your own business suddenly you realize you've got all these blocks and limitations and and, and negative self-beliefs that just have to be uncovered so yeah lots oh. of help in all Sounds like you had a lot of support. Was it paid? Did you pay for the coaches or were they colleagues? Yeah, mo- mostly paid, to be honest. I mean, yes, I've done some things like read books and podcasts and blog and um, listen to podcasts and read people's blogs. But I find the best quality stuff to be stuff that I pay for because mm. I'm invested in it financially. In my head, it makes sense to, to pay for these things. Um, and yeah, so I've got the best results out of, of that kind of stuff. And I think generally when you pay for something, you're more committed, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. You've got, you've got skin in the game. You've got, to, you've got to make it work. I mean, I've paid for stuff before that didn't come off at the end. Um, so I paid for a really expensive property course when I was right at the start thinking that that was going to save me. Um, turns out it didn't save me. It just made things a lot, lot worse. And I learned so much about myself through that year, like my resilience and what I'm capable of doing, but it wasn't property at the end of it. It actually led me to become the female money doctor. So it's, yeah, I I learned a lot from even the failures. So what strategies do you use to find the right clients for your business and what has been the most successful? Oh, okay. So all sorts of things, Um, social media being one of them. So I, often do posts that reflect me as an individual so I like drinking wine I like going out with my friends nice high heel shoes the mistakes I've made I I sometimes bring some of that into my social media and that for me is signaling to the type of person that I want to bring into my world I am not a stuffy corporate financial person I don't want to have that kind of reputation I want things to be light and fun and people bring wine to my money talks and and stuff like that and that's how I like it and that's how I want it to be um so social media has been a big part of that especially creating a Facebook group I absolutely love my Facebook group I love all the people in it and there's some often really nice questions that come through and it's all very non-judgmental and if anyone Mm. is a little bit judgy in what they say immediately somebody will will correct that or I'll correct it because I don't want money to become something that's judgmental at all. And I've seen other groups that are not like that. So I know that I was a special. Um, and then the other thing is I often invite people to a 15 minute strategy session. Now that's not with the intention of selling to them. I'm not having these 15 minute sessions to jump on them like a sleazy car show, you know, sales person and saying, Oh, you must buy my thing. No, it's about finding out about that person exactly as I would as a GP. What do they need? Is it something I can help them with? Or do I think actually they should go and see a financial advisor or do they need to go and speak to somebody in a different area entirely like a counselor or psychotherapist or whatever? Mm -hmm. So I find those sessions really, really useful to to do. They're they're a bit more time consuming, but it's worth it because I get to find out so much about people as well that are in my community. Mm. And how do you plan your content? Because I see a lot of your posts on social media and very informative do you have a how do you generate ideas for your content um I think because I'm so passionate about it (laughs) the ideas find me um you know I might come across something in my email so I I subscribe to a lot of um sort of financial type information emails so Fidelity and Hargus Lansdowne and and sometimes that will will bring up something um other times it's things I've seen on the news or a statistic I've read Or it might just be a question. Someone's asked a question or I get the same question over and over again. And that leads me to create a free ebook that someone can download. Um, So it, they just, it just gets generated from all sorts of places and I write it down. So I've got it on my phone. I've got like a list of podcast ideas. Um, You know, I might read a book and a a sentence jumps out at me and that forms a whole 10 minute podcast. So it's, yeah, that, I suppose that's just, I just get inspiration from all different areas and, and record it so that I can come back to it later. And do you have a planner as well as to how you schedule your posts or do you just post as, as and when? Yeah, like so I'm, I've, that's only been a recent thing, though, in the last, I'd say, six to eight months, something like that. I didn't really have a plan before, but I've, I've recently paid for a, um, a personal one to one coach who has just got a different way of thinking. I, my brain's a bit like spaghetti junction. <laughs> He's got a very like 
methodical way of doing it. He's, he's into IT, so I think that really helps. He's got this really clear way of looking at stuff. So he's shown me how to create a spreadsheet with all of my social media platforms across the top. And then down the side, it's, okay, how many times we're going to post every day for each of these areas? It can be overwhelming, you know, especially if you're on something like Twitter and you're posting 10 times a day. Personally, I don't bother with Twitter. I don't like Twitter as a platform. I'd much use, rather use something like Facebook, Instagram, and I'm, I'm starting to get my head around what's working in those things. It's, it's all a very big work in progress for me, though. I, I can't mm. profess to being an expert. It's just I want to post three times a week on Facebook, three times a week on Instagram or whatever. I'm just going to make sure I've got some posts to go out. And, I, and that's how it works. You know, it's, mm. it may change with time, but that's, as, that's how I try to stay on top of it and be organized. Yeah, that's right. I think having a plan, uh, a planner or a plan keeps you more focused and stay on top of things, as you say. Oh, absolutely. Just, um, recently, I came across um, a woman called Janet Murray. Um, so if anyone's listening, they've not come across her before and they want some help with their social media. She's been a real help for me and she's got a planner and I've been using her planner to to work in things like um, awareness days into my social media content and actually physically have a plan on a piece of paper that I can scribble all over, which is actually really nice. I, I prefer that over a spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah, there's all sorts of people out there that that, mm. that, that is all they do. They just focus on this. So uh, I was doing some research on Google Trends. If um, if people don't know it, it's a website that shows popularity of words that people search mm. uh, for on Google. So I was doing a research and one of the most popular keywords towards the end of last year and beginning of this year was saving money. <laughs> so in your experience, what are the most common reasons people struggle with money? Oh, that, so one of the things that I trained in is to become a, a money personality coach. So money, sacred money archetypes coach. And there are eight different personality types. And some of them are very good with saving money. You know, so an accumulator has no issue with saving money at all. Their problem is spending it for the rest of the archetypes. They will have a slightly different reason why they they struggle with savings. And there's one archetype that likes to give it away. So as women, we were very giving um naturally i think and also we're, we're kind of taught to be like that so we're more likely to overgive, you know buy loads of stuff for our kids give money away to our children give discounts to people not price our, our services properly all that kind of stuff um but then there's also other archetypes that focus on spending because they feel it, they deserve it they don't want to be told no i can't spend my money i don't want to budget and be told i have to do it this way but actually, that's just us sabotaging ourselves. We, we do need to have some element of fun in our, our budget. I definitely uh, just, um, subscribe to that theory. And I tell everybody that's paying off debt, you still need to have fun. You still need to have some fun money. But it's when it goes over the top and then all of a sudden we've we've not factored in everything like our health, making sure we've got money for the future, you know, retirement, that kind of stuff. Because we're very in, instant gratification. We want it now. And that's just over time. That's just how it's developed. We've got really easy access to credit cards, overdrafts, all sorts of, you know, now Klarna and, and companies like that are, are saying you can get your T-shirt from H&M now if you want to. If you can't afford 20, 30 pounds or whatever, fine, pay it over four months. And it's, it, yeah, I, it's, that's just the culture. That's just the way it is. So you have to have goals that you want to aim for that are compelling enough to make you actually want to save the money. And if you don't have those goals, in the forefront of your mind it's very easy to just give in to the the nearest thing so yeah so on your website you have a um a quiz called the unique money personality quiz yes why, why do you think that's important to identify what our uh, money personalities are it's when you've got knowledge about yourself and how you do things it really um helps you to see where you're making the mistakes and then you you don't have to change yourself this is about being unique you don't have to do what the next person's doing just make it more adaptable to the way you are as a person if we don't have that consciousness around it we we do things unconsciously so my my personality type is a maverick mavericks jump from thing to thing they are into the shiny objects they are into the you know get rich quick type stuff which is probably the reason i got myself into so much debt and, and trouble in the first place but now i'm conscious of it 
I can actually have that internal conversation and say, hang on a second, why am I jumping into this? Am I jumping into this because it's fun and my maverick is going, yeah, let's do it. Or is it something that I actually have to do? And that, that then stops me and gives me pause and actually it really helps. Mm. Um, so finding out about yourself is so important because then you can put strategies in place to stop sabotaging yourself. <laughs> true. So true. I, I took a test. I took the quiz actually. <laughs> and says okay. my money type is a um it's a ruler oh yeah so rulers um particularly in the medical profession and well any any profession where you've got to spend a lot of time studying will have ruler qualities because rulers are very much into their career ladder um or building their business very ambitious the problem with the ruler is that they they've got these amazing ideas and they'll go from idea to idea but it's never enough so they'll get to their goal and then they'll say oh okay great what's next where's the next where's the next and that's the problem with the ruler and not being aware of that quality so what I say to people is with if they've got that ruler's strength it's fantastic it's going to give you so much drive but okay now think about what you can do to help do that little bit of celebration time do that little bit of calm time having some holiday time whatever borrow it from one of the other archetypes because you we've all got them we've all got the ability to have um experiences of all of those archetypes so what would a romantic do a romantic would buy the things they want to buy they'd have the, the easy life and they'd have some lazy time and just read a book or do nothing whereas to a ruler that feels like a waste of time but actually we need that to be able to keep generating the ideas and to keep keep moving and keep having the energy that we need to actually build our businesses so it's important Mm -hmm. interesting um so what we tend to hear that one of the most common barriers to starting a business is funding so financial funding Mm -hmm. and i was reading an article recently it showed that there are significant disparities between men and women uh, entrepreneurs when it comes to financial funding and it was saying that women tend to start businesses with less available capital than men what are some of the essential strategies that you think people could uh, adopt to prepare financially before uh, for a career change or starting a business? Mm, okay, so one of the things I tell people to do in their budget is if they think they want to change their career or they need to learn something, they should have an education fund. So always have some money set aside for buying courses, employing coaches, you know, taking on a degree, whatever it is that you need to do in order to switch your career. And ask yourself, do I actually need to do those things in order to make the switch? Like I didn't need to initially jump into becoming a financial educator or financial money coach or whatever. I did it through experience and then I've brought the qualifications in later. So think and ask yourself, do you actually need to do these things? And then do you actually need the capital? So I'm in something called the NatWest Business Accelerator, which is brilliant so if you you can apply to that um for free and you can go along to their they have they offer free coaching links so if you're accepted you get a coach every month to to sort of go through everything you're doing in your business they've also got a, a women's only um part of that so you can actually sign up as a woman and be and be helped from that perspective and they talk about funding and all, and all and they have these amazing millionaire speakers that come on to to give us the inspiration and tell us what we need to do But I think for it's so difficult to answer that question because it's like, well, what why do you need the money in the first place? I started my blog with nothing and it's built up over time. And I yes, I'm still self-funding to a certain degree because I'm still paying for my my coach and things like that. But eventually my business will be paying me back for that because it's that's how it's growing. I didn't want to ever take on a loan. I don't want to start my business with debt. So it's it's also asking yourself, do you need that funding? OK, if you're growing later on, if you've got a skincare company and you're suddenly needing money to be able to create a factory to be able to expand your, your thing, fine. But you need to be able to prove to the people that are going to lend you that money that your business is going to be successful. So you've got to do a lot of work before you get to that point. Mm. So, yeah, it's... I don't know if that's answered your question or not, but yeah, that's, it has. You know, that's how I think of it. It's don't start with debt. Do what you can do first. Uh, I, uh, you know, no, it makes sense. Totally makes sense. And also, I'm not sure. Are you currently working as a GP as well alongside yeah. your business? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So that could be another source of income for people thinking of, you know, starting a business. They could yeah. consider stop putting aside some money. Absolutely. There's the no 
yeah there's no need to completely quit I mean yeah okay there's been so many times where I've just wanted to quit my job and just focus on my business because I love it but I know that my, that I need my job right now to help me to fund myself so I can move forward with the business and eventually it will be on its own two feet that's that's the vision I've got for myself and it will be there for me to to live from but for now I still carry on working and that's I think that's also important to know you don't have to leave your job straight away like do it along the side and see your job as that prop to get you to that next level so are you working full-time at the moment as a doctor no so the nice thing about being a GP is that I can go part-time and actually as a GP I think you'd go mental (laughs) if you went full-time so I work three days a week um, which is enough for me I don't feel that I need to do more than that it's enough it it covers all my my bills my savings all the things I wanted to do and then the other two days a week and a little bit of weekends I will work on my business okay all right how are you balancing what's what has been the most challenging aspect of balancing well, life or well, business <laughs> just generally balancing I mean if I had kids I've got no idea how I would do this so I don't have children to start with so that's that's helpful um but one of the best pieces of advice I was given as a child was you need to make time and you need to steal time so it's it's getting out of that mindset of oh I'm too tired or oh, I don't have enough time or I can't do this you've got to find time there's no you can't get around it you have to make time in order to build your business and there's a lot of work that is needed in you know doing that you don't have to do all the things either to start with you could focus on one social media platform get your blog or get your website or whatever up and running and then focus on actually bringing some money in and that that's all you need to do to start a business you don't have to do everything all at once It, it might seem like you have to be on every single platform yeah grab the handles for all of those platforms to make sure that you've got the ones you want but you don't have to be active on all of them all the time you just have to be active on one or you know one usually to start with a couple of them if you want to but mm. um yeah it's, a, it's just about making time that's been the biggest challenge for me is I'm time poor, but I've still got to make it work somehow. I've still got to get a blog out and I still have to get the podcast out and things like that. Cause that's how I've now decided to set up my business. And as my business has expanded, I've actually started employing people to help me with that. And that's the other part of it as well. It's the not doing it all yourself. Initially you have to, but then eventually you do have to start trusting other people to help you. So I've got someone that helps me with my blogs. I've got someone that helps me with my Instagram eventually I want them to do more but I can't afford that right now so I'm I'm still having to do a lot myself but I'm expanding as I go along so Mm. and it's not always perfect (laughs) so you know I don't always get it right and sometimes things bomb and and that's cool that's fine too you know and it starts you start somewhere don't you that's um that's why goal setting might be key initially so you can Mm. you know one step at a time look at what's achievable now before you know moving on to the next step absolutely there's no point looking at you know this is the mistake I made I looked at people that were doing similar things and thinking that I was falling behind because they looked so polished and perfect and everything looked amazing and they had the professional photos and every they had every single platform going and they were on all the different podcasts and being interviewed by absolutely everybody and when I started I was like there's, I can't do that there's no way I can do that that I might as well give up but that's not how they started they started like everybody else does which is very small and humble and you build up from there and you you learn stuff as you go so yeah if you're at the right at the start and you think you've got to get it all perfect don't you don't have to at all Mm, I think that's the problem sometimes with social comparison doesn't it but that Mm -hmm. can be our biggest downfall so what transferable skills do you think you have been that have been the most valuable Mm, so I mean, doctors, we have to diagnose, right? So for me, I've always been very good at getting to the heart of someone's problem and then explaining it back to them in a way that makes sense. And that, I think, has been the biggest thing that I've taken through to my money coaching business. I can listen to someone's problem and then get an idea about what they need help with and then offer them back that explanation um i i explain financial jargon in probably a very weird way to (laughs) what what other people would think but it makes sense to me and it makes sense to people that hear it because suddenly it's like oh that actually that's that's now in my my language my my way of thinking so now i get it 
So that's they're the transferable skills. It's the breaking it down into easy to manage chunks, easy to understand concepts. Mm. Which is so useful because the majority of us within the health professional don't are not taught financial education. So no. that financial literacy is so key. So as you say, if it's broken down to simple concepts that we can understand, yeah. it makes it look so easy for us to, to yeah. apply it. And we make it too difficult for ourselves as well. It's, you know, in you know, these kinds of professions, we, we overcomplicate things, but actually it just comes down to get your budget set up, right? Put some money aside for your investments, make sure you're paying into your pension. It's kind of, it's very, it, it is very simple, but we make it too complicated by thinking, oh, it's got to be Bitcoin or it's got to be, oh, maybe I need to do something with my pension. Maybe I need to opt out of my pension and do something crazy with the money. And no, you don't <laughs> Just stay in the pension and find other ways to top up your income for your retirement and make sure your budget is okay. And you're not over, overstretching yourself. That's what it boils down to. Well, what words of encouragement would you give to someone thinking of becoming a money coach? So I would say just do it. <laughs> if you've got a, a unique voice and a new way of explaining things and you've got a passion for it, just start. You know, we need lots of different voices from different backgrounds, cultures, genders. You know, we need all these different people talking about their experiences. So, yeah, just just do it. And if if you're if you've got butterflies or you're scared, yeah you will have those all the way through it doesn't yet uh, what i've come to discover is it doesn't matter what level you get to you are still going to be nervous and unsure and feel the imposter syndrome and all that kind of stuff every level you know even multi-millionaires i've listened to their podcasts and they're like yeah I still get that you know you speak to people like oprah and she says that every single person she interviews ask them if it was okay at the end of the interview even barack obama and people like that and you think well actually if they get it we're going to get it. So you just got to ignore it and just keep moving forward. Any words of warning? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm a maverick. So I jump into things without thinking them through very, very easily. So that's a good skill sometimes, but not in other times. But what I would say is analysis paralysis can really stop you. Um, so if you think you've got to get it all perfect and all all right and no one's ever going to criticize you and people aren't ever going to leave your email list and it, it doesn't work like that unfortunately you're not going to set up one day and then all of a sudden it's going to be all hunky-dory a week later and you're going to be a six-figure business owner that's not how it works <laughs> you've got to you've got to take the time you've got to put the time and the effort in and I've been going now for nearly four years and I am still nowhere where I thought I was going to be after a year in my head I thought oh it's all going to all align and everyone's going to see who I am no, you set up a, you set up your um, your website, and no one knows you're there. You have to tell them that you're there, and you have to keep telling them that you're there over and over and over and over again. And once you get that, you realise that everyone's in the same boat. So you just mm. got to keep going, going through mm. it. So yeah, don't think it's going to work overnight because <laughs> it doesn't. Great advice. <laughs> great advice. <laughs> what do you do to relax? Oh, you know what? Well, because rule is in my top three as well. So I struggle with this one. Um, but I love um, reading. I'm, I'm really into Netflix as well. I mean, oh, my God, I've watched Bridgerton twice through now because it's just so good. Um, I've got a thing about Disney as well. So I'll sit there and watch Disney films and that literally just switches my brain off. Mm. Um, and I know that's, that sounds ridiculous for a 35 year old. But you know what? I love it and it you helps it. So. Yeah. exactly it's all um, relative isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly and you know I I would like to say that I go out walking every single day and I'm you know really good with everything but in honesty I'm not <laughs> by the end of the week I'm just like no nah, just gonna sit here and watch Netflix <laughs> to itch the own to itch the own <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so, well thank you very very much for coming to share some insights with us uh, where can people connect with you uh, okay, so my website is thefemamoneydoctor.com. And as you said, the quiz is on there. So if you're interested to find out who you are as a personality type, you can find it on there. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, literally, if you put the female money doctor in, you should be able to find me in most places. And as you've already mentioned, my podcast, The Money Medicine Clinic, which is just literally 10 minute snippets of different um, financial concepts, you know, personal development concepts, like a GP would with their patient you know, one problem, one 10 minute appointment, 
So that's, that's it. That's great. Well, Dr. Nikki, um, thank you so much. And uh, you take care. <laughs> no, thank you very much for having me. It's been great. <laughs> it's been great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you like the podcast, please subscribe, rate it and review it on iTunes as this can help others find it. If you'd like updates on the podcast, you can follow the pages on Instagram or Facebook by searching for Well Restorer. If you have any questions or would like to give some feedback, you can send an email to info at wellrestorer.co.uk. Thanks once again. Take care.